The Global Comparative Study is a, is a multi-component project, as you know. It has several components to it, and one component looking really more at the national level, national red policies and processes, and then another component looking at more the demonstration activities, a third component looking more at the biophysical side of things, reference levels and monitoring, and then a the fourth component more the outreach part. Myself, I'm more involved in the first component, looking at the national um, processes and policies, and here um, we're trying to look at what RED is evolving at the national level, looking at the processes, trying to identify who are the key actors, what is their motivation behind them, but then also in a second step trying to look at the strategies that are e slowly emerging in different countries and trying with the aim to assess those in terms of their carbon effectiveness, to which extent they really address the drivers of deforestation or ultimately deforest emissions, cost efficiency and then also the equity and co benefits part. What you can try to do is at least group countries with similarity, with similar differences, uh, similar similarities. They're either similar along their forest transition curve, so either they yet uh, still have low deforestation rates but high forest cover, or very high um, deforestation rates or lower ones, and then already increasing forest cover again due to reforestation and afforestation. So you can try to classify and map those countries and these different. Um, circumstances and conditions and then also maybe then in the second step try to look at institutional similarities and out of these I mean of these these country groups try to draw lessons in what of their processes but also their what, what policies did uh, seem to work in these different contexts and then inform uh, the global debate and even other countries in the same group which are not part of the study but could still be At the very beginning, we try to capture the national uh, context. We'll try to look at uh, what are the motivations behind the drivers of deforestation. What is how is business is done? What are the institutions, formal, informal ones? Um, but also, what is the political economy? What are the what are the drivers of, of, of land use change? So, to a certain extent, we do capture those. But uh, yes, there are differences, and we have to be sensitive to those and not ignore them in the analysis. Several sources of information, uh, one of them of course secondary data, you look at statistics, ex existing statistics, of course also existing studies, you don't want to repeat uh, ongoing studies and good work that has been done, you want to build up on work. But then also original surveys, you go out, you talk to policy makers, you talk to other actors and stakeholders involved at various levels and across sectors. Um, yeah, I think those captures them and those, those are the, the main data gathering. Parts. And then for the strategy part, you would look at the initial strategy documents as they are coming out of the process and use what you have available. My perception is that we have a several step approach and one of them is that you look at first upfront, how can you make sure that it's always end user driven in a certain extent and that you sit down and check again so for whom is this certain information useful and what other information we may forget. So this implies talking to policymakers during the methodological design and also regularly when you have these interviews or in, in other consultations be sure that you're alert and attentive. And then also listen about their suggestions, how it would you could best impact. And then in the second or more advanced step, when it goes to translating it into real impact, keeping those thoughts in mind and then being targeted. And I, uh, my sense is that different target groups require different uh, tools. Uh, so for policymakers, perhaps a consultative a review of your reports where everybody can discuss openly, maybe even in a confidential setting, so that we can freely and openly talk without any political discourse interfering. Um, it can be for the local level, local stakeholders, more easily translated. I mean, of course, local language is translated as one option too, but in maybe also in more digested form.
One of the main interests for me in, in REDD is how RED will translate now at the national level and at the local level. And yes, there will be uh, there will be risk or there may be trade-offs between effectiveness, I mean really addressing the drivers of forest emissions and equity and other co-benefits, uh, fairness, equal benefit sharing. So uh, while I am on the one hand very enthusiastic about this idea on RED, I can see it as a huge opportunity. I on the other hand want to remain a neutral or skeptical or critical scientist trying to understand well how will it play out in the given setting, what are potential risks and what are avenues or ways to mitigate those risks. And feed those ones back into the national process ideally and even globally and even as lessons learned for other countries.